Hi and welcome to SallyHughesBeauty.com um, My latest in a series of hanging out with my favourite women in their bathroom is my friend Gizzy Erskine um, Gizzy is a chef, a TV presenter, a food writer and lots of other things as well but is also known for her look so I really wanted to chat to her about her beauty routine because she's got a very recognisable um, distinctive beauty style so I'm going to talk to her about that today Hello! Hello! It's so cool to have you in here! This is like the coolest <laughs> bathroom ever! I love it! I can't keep you in here We could fit in here quite easily I know, I think, I think if we get bored we should just slide back Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely, just... we get some ESOP in there Yeah You've done this bathroom though Yeah, yeah. no we did, we did the whole place Place. We bought the place from um, this woman called Beryl, who has called herself a white witch, uh, clairvoyant, fortune teller. This is not screaming great in tears. <laughs> no, so it wasn't. I mean, we came here and she had scraped away at the wallpaper and found all this vic original Victorian wallpaper um, and decided she didn't want to do it. So we came there and there were like holes in the wall where she'd sort of scraped away and sort of decided against it. We went into the kitchen and there was like a cat poo on um, on like a, a sort of trestle table with the double top a hob sort of thing with a cat poo on the hob, which was awesome, you know. Nice moving it <laughs> not really the bottle of champagne and the flowers. No, the so bread. it was literally gut, everything, new walls, ceiling, floors, doors, you know, roof, and then start again. And who are we joined by today? Percy's my peacock. He's a good looking chap, right? He's quite something. <laughs> He's absolutely amazing. Um, and you, so taxidermy is something you love, right? I love, I collect. I've got tons, I'll show you in a bit. But yeah. we've got owls, we've got we've got peacocks, we've got bunnies, we've got, you name it, probably. We've got it, stags. Work. This sort of love of um, old things is a real thing for you, isn't it? You love kind of looking back in terms of your personal style and interiors and so on. Have you always gone for this sort of vintage look? Um, sort of. I mean, when I was really young, you know, I, was, I got into heavy metal. My big sister was my hero, and she's four years older than me. Came back from school one day with a Cure album, standing on the beach, learned every word to impress her, um, but then started to realise that the music, you know, all my friends were listening to Star Trekking and things like that, which was also brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, I only realised things that you shunned as a teenager. Quite right. Quite good. Yeah. <laughs> Spitting image song, I'm sorry. One of the best ever. Um, but... You know, I, I, it sort of opened because I loved her and her worshipped to her so much. You know, then she came home with Guns and Roses. I learned all that, and so I got into heavy metal to begin with. So my first sort of fashion beauty thing was not good. It wasn't a good look. I, you know, big baggy jeans, um, sort of metal t-shirts, hair all over my face, loads of black eyeliner everywhere, white face. Um, but badly done as well. Yeah. I mean, like, as good as you can do when you're sort of 13, 14 years old. So when did you start to find your groove a bit in terms of your signature style as we know it now? Well, I mean, then, then I sort of went and, and got into punk, which sort of was a bit sort of more refined, although, you know, I, started, I learned how to do my own hair. That was a really useful thing about yeah. being into punk. And then psychobilly. So I think the, the beehive arrived in the midst of me sort of loving psychobilly. So about 19 years old, but it wasn't a full one. I always only had the top bit done and wore my hair down at the right. back. And I had, like, red stripes with jet black hair, red stripes, you know, black and red fringe. Um, and then kind of 50s makeup, sort of what I have now, sometimes even a bit more full on, you know, more Winehouse um, than Hepburn, so shall we say. Kind of dirty, yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, sure. Yeah. Then I sort of got into more and more into rockabilly, so the look sort of got more 50s. Realised that didn't actually suit me as much, oddly. Um, so the hive went back up. 60s just sort of seemed to be the look that really fitted me. And, and then the music, my music sort of went far more down that route. I got really into sort of 60s garage punk and stuff like that. So, but now I kind of, you know, as you grow up, you don't really get into scenes anymore. I just love it all. Yeah. You know, I even love the metal yeah. stuff now. Yeah. They're parts of my so look. nothing wrong with Guns N' Roses? No way. I would see yeah. them last year. So the Beehive, does that go up every day? Um, it used to. And if I'm working, it has to generally. Um, for two reasons. People are like, but you're a cook, why do you need a beehive? It's the most practical haircut yeah. you can imagine as a cook, you know. No, nothing's going to fall out with the amount of backcombing hair spray. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Um, so, you know, but actually... Can you sleep in it? You can, but it hurts. And I don't need to, you know, I just brush it out. And it's actually, the longer I leave it, the more damage it does. So if I brush it out every yeah. night, it's actually better off. But now, you know, after doing this pretty much every day since I was about 19, 20, um, it's, um, I mean, give or take the odd week of a holiday, it's, it's a bit like, fuck you, <laughs> leave yeah. me alone, it's had enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've seen, I saw you with it down recently. Yeah. Uh, Indy's book. Yeah. Yes. Didn't you? 
And that was the first time I'd ever seen Everyone, it down. no one recognises me. But it looks like it's in good nick, though, considering mm. it's had a hammering. It's all right. I mean, I have to do a lot of work to keep it in good nick. I mean, so it's, what do you do? Um, so I wash it. I do, like, hot oil treatments, which is the one thing I've managed to sustain from my childhood. I don't think they actually do anything. But I still love doing it once a week. Um, do, you I, drop the, do you drop the it, tube in the hot water? Yes! <laughs> um, and then I, I wash my hair and I put on... Um, uh, I actually use a conditioning treatment pretty much every time I wash my hair. Sometimes to just get the, um, you know, if there's any more knots in there, out. Um, but I also leave it in for a really long time. And then I use... Actually, I use a product here. I'm going to show you. Yeah, I do. Um, which uh, is just a leave-in conditioner from Kiehl's. And it really, really helps. I mean, I've been using this for a while now. And it literally... Strengthening and hydrating hair on your yeah. feet. Mm -hmm. And it just makes your hair just a bit more elastic. So when you're brushing it, it doesn't yeah. snap as oh, much. It smells nice. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Mm. Um, but it's not, uh, you know, it doesn't sort of make your hair greasy or anything like that. It just makes it feel tougher. Um, but you know what? I'm, I'm actually really bad when it comes to beauty. I'm quite a tomboy. And although I have a signature look, I, I don't really know much about beauty or products or anything like that. Well, it's funny. I was talking to a friend about this recently, and, and she was saying, you know, she does what she does really well, but never really deviates. Do you, is your makeup always the same, pretty much? Pretty much. I mean, like, I might put a bit of colour mm -hmm. as in the eyeshadow. Like, occasionally, I change the lip. Like, I, I've done a red lip a few times recently. But I feel like it's quite severe. And actually, when you've got the hive, you've got the liner, you've got the lashes. There's a lot going on. It's too much sometimes. So, and also, the clothes are quite full on as well. So, it's sometimes I just feel like it's too much. Yeah. I'd love to be able to have that sort of bare face red lip. You know, when I, when I do wear my hair down, I have it sort of shingle, like sort of Veronica Lakey yeah. um, to the side. Now, that's a real pain in the bum to do. Everyone says that they imagine the beehives to take forever. It takes me five minutes. So I actually wear my hair down and have it where I just, because I don't feel comfortable with just straight hair. Yeah. Um, so I like to do something with it, but that takes me about 45 minutes, to style, you know. To style your hair in a long hairstyle is, um, is a much longer process, I think, than to shove it up, especially if you've got the routine down. Yeah, totally. So you always do an eye, a flicky eye, yeah. don't you? And a strong brow. And, yeah. Yeah. So what products do you use for that? Um, should I grab my makeup bag? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. For me, there are, I suppose, four or five key things that I really have to do with my makeup. And um, base is probably like, one of them. I'm a massive fan of Bobbi Brown. You are yeah, too, aren't you? Huge fan. <laughs> so you use long wear. Yeah. So have you got a little bit of oiliness in your skin? Are you um, a combo? I'm completely combination, but I've got one of those really annoying skins where um, if I don't have it, if I don't have enough moisture in it, in my make uh, my moisturizer on my bases, then I tend to like get these bumpy things. Do you know what I don't know what they're called? The little white bumps. What under the surface yeah. of your skin? Yeah. But if I put too much moisturizer on, I get them as well. Uh -huh. So to find like that, but apparently that means my skin's dehydrated. Well, I was just about to say to you, I don't think that's a dry. I don't think it's that you need lots of moisture. It's that you need hydration. Yeah, but I've tried that and it just doesn't work. What have you tried? I've tried every single rehydrating, like hydrating moisturiser, and they just seem to make it worse, which is weird. So I've got a proper like emollient cream at the moment that seems to be, seems to be doing mm -hmm. things. So you're quite loyal to this, then. This is it, works for you. It really works for me. Um, I, to be honest, sometimes I don't know if you have this as well. I've, this is probably my third bottle I've bought of this, and I think I should change again mm -hmm. so I can use it again soon. For some reason, my skin gets too used to something as really? well. Yeah, I think so. I always think that's a bit of a myth, but if but if it feels nice to mix it up, mm. if it feels kind of a treat for your skin to mix it up, I mean, sometimes you just get a bit more parched and you want some more moisture and you kind of switch for a while and then go back. Um, but she's got a new long way one coming out. Oh, that's good to yeah, know. It's <laughs> more of a solid cream. Um, which you might like instead. So then, um, what do I do? I do my um, touche clay under my eyes, which I can't find. Oh, here we go. It's because it's got a snazzy tube. Ah, you've got the <laughs> um, so you use the classic shade. So that goes under your eyes, yeah? And then a mixture of these two guys for, um, for concealing, just generally. Effersense is a really, really good concealer. Have you been using this for years? Uh, do you know what? I got um, given it by my very first makeup artist when I, because I modelled very briefly when I was about, no, that can't have been that longer. I'm sorry, I think it must have been about 10 year, years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Would that sound about right? Yeah. Maybe even longer. Yeah, it's been around for ages. Yeah. It's a really, really good concealer. Yeah. It kind of stays there. 
Totally, and she actually used to mix it with foundation as well, like for really, yeah. uh, and the coverage is amazing. Yeah, when you need an extra kind of mm. cool. Um, and then um, I set it with um, Studio Fix. I love powder. I just think it's the chicest thing ever to Me too, face powder. but nobody does. Nobody, e nobody kind of our age yeah. uses face powder because they think it's something grannies do, which appeals to me, I have to say. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I, like, I like a granny. Genetic, but it looks so, it makes everything look so pulled together, yeah. and polished. If I was an actual lady, which I'm really not because I'm a tomboy, but wouldn't it be great to have one of those really beautiful um, powder compacts yeah. with really great powder? I mean, I, yeah. I just that's something to aspire to. That's like yeah. drinking whiskey. Yeah. When I grow yeah. up, I'm going to be able to drink whiskey and I'm going to have a powder compact. Yeah, and just be pissed all the time. Yeah. Two blushes. God, this sounds like an awful lot of work, but it isn't actually. I can no. do my makeup in five minutes too. What have I done with my other one? Oh, here we go. This one's smashed. But it's the best colour in the universe and it's cheap as chips. That's Body Shop. All in one cheap colour shade in macaroon. It's, pleasing. Uh huh, very pleasing. Um, but it's it's like a real. I love corals, I think they're very mm. 60s. I love them. Um, too. And sometimes it's if really I'm. Really underrated coral though, it's so flattering. So flattering. Yeah. And like apricots and corals are gorgeous, but coral, like something a bit brighter. And then if I'm yeah. feeling very bold, I yeah. go bright pink. And it, I feel like it's quite a dolly look, you know. I like looking like a, a doll. Yeah. Um, so that's Nars. Um, well, you've got, like me, you've got that sort of face. You have to kind of go with it. You yeah. Kind of go, you know, we're never going to be the sort of bronzed. Oh goddess, my god, never. So that, you know, you've just got to go with what yeah. you've got. I mean, you've pale got is that anything. Thing, yeah, and that English thing, thing as well. Yeah, if you look very, very British, you yeah. have to go with it. Um, so then, so that's kind of my base. And then I go on to. Um, my eyes, which is a mixture of, I do like white, uh, not white, yeah. but like a, a creamy, mm -hmm. like pearl colour in my lids. And then I do, hmm, sort of like this colour, like a, a apricotty colour with a bit of brown. What, what yeah. colour would you say that was? You're better at this game than me. It's like a, a sort of pale terracotta, isn't it? Yeah, hmm. that's a good. Who's this palette by? Oh, Sleek. Sleek is so good. Are they really good? See, I got that in a goodie bag. That, it's proper cheap. That, do you know what? That summarises me perfectly. I don't have a clue if it's posh, if it's designer, if it's high street, if it's a cheap and cheerful brand. It's one of the best yeah. of the cheap ranges. It's yeah. really great. Yeah. Oh, cool. I mean, I, I literally just, you know, whatever I get given in my goodie bag, I tend to think, well, that'll do. <laughs> so all these colours have seen some wear, though. Yeah, absolutely. Bit, apart from the red. But actually, the red I would wear, oddly, yeah. but just maybe not. We're against the black. Liner. Oh, it's probably quite cool, I think. Um, and then, oh gosh, hey bands. And then I go for like a purple. Um, so I would either use that sort of like a dark purple or like a mm -hmm. uh, nice, like a oh, taupey purple, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, in my sort of heather, isn't it? Kind of yeah. Um, in in my sockets and mm -hmm. under my eye actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is the question everyone asks me, which is what eyeliner I do actually yeah. use. Art liner. It's amazing. Have you used this before? Yes, it's very, very good. It's so good. I mean, it's like a felt tip pen. So you l literally, you just draw on and it's it's really easy. Like you can't bugger it up. Do you think if we give you a mirror, you can go over what's already there? Yeah, let me have a, doing. I can do that. So you literally just go in from the corner. And the thing is my line is actually quite a lot um, thicker. The most so every time it's I a get really my kind of sixties girl group line. Yes, it, exactly. Kind of fifties one. Yeah, every time I go on a shoot and I get given a makeup artist that I haven't worked with before, they do this tiny line. I'm like, no, 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 seriously, thick, like somewhere between Winehouse and and um, and Hepburn. And they're like, and they, it, it takes about twenty goes. And in the end, I've, I've just started to do my line myself. Yeah. You know, it's so much easier. So it's really, really, you know. Simple. And actually, sometimes I like to do it even thicker. And sometimes, if, if I'm going out and I want to wear a bit more makeup, I'll bring it down and with, with a little bit of um, pencil underneath mm -hmm. so, it, so it actually connects it, so it becomes yeah. more like a cat eye. Yeah. Um, but I always feel like I'm wearing a bit too much makeup when I do that. And do you find that transfers, or does it stay put? It stays put. doesn't end up on your own? No, eye. quite the contrary. Sometimes I, I have to reapply it, like if I've worn it all day, before yeah. I go back out in the evening. But, um, you know, most of the time it, it will stay put. And is that, that's your favourite one? Is that the one you always go Well, I've got to? hundreds in here. I'll show you. I've, got, I've also got the, um, I've got a Revlon and I've got a Shoe and Mirror one. This mm -hmm. one's good. Mm -hmm. Shoe and Mirror one's really good. 
But, uh, you know, I've, I've tried and tested all of them. And you know the little dippy ones that you, yeah. that like, um, you know, like old school fountain pens and yeah. things like that. They're, they're all right. I just, the Guerlain one's amazing. Mm. The Guerlain one is really brilliant. Everyone says that. And I've used it and it's, I find that the, it's too thin. It oh, takes really? me long, too long. The thing about this one is it's got a really thick tip if you need it, but it's also you can do really thin. Let's have a look. Yeah, no, it's really fun. And also it's a bit like having your eyeliner tattooed on it. It gets really yeah. thick. Yeah. You know, which I really like. And also it's matte. And it's nice and stiff, the brush. Do you know what I hate um, are the ones that you use the palette and like the proper old school, old school yeah, ones. Yeah, no, but they're never black enough. That's yeah. That's the problem. They're a bit watery. Or they pinch your eyes together. You, do you know what I mean? They yeah. sort of like dry and they like... Yeah, they, they pucker, don't yeah, they? Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your language is brilliant. Um, and then um, my favourite mascara in the history of the world... Lots of people's face. Yeah. I know it is. Not yours, clearly. <laughs> it's not, but only because I'm a big smudger, so I have to go for a tubing mascara what instead does that of a mean? dye. Tubing mascaras use polymers, i.e. plastic, mm. instead of dye and fibres, like a traditional mascara. Mm -hmm. So they coat each lash with plastic, and they never Whoa. smudge. They never smudge. No, but do they make your lashes as thick? No, so what I do, cunningly, yeah. is that I use a really dramatic mascara, like YSL or Dior Show, mm get proper brilliant lashes then I do a last coat oh, of tubing clever. mascara and I it down. clever but clever I quite often have extensions in to be honest so do you do you have them no. no yeah I did them once and they were really annoying um in the you weren't allowed to use face wash, and I'm a face washer mm -hmm. for sure um, you can use face wash but that, but then they all fell out oil you're not allowed to use is that one got oil in it that's what I use for my face wash oh I'll have a look in a second yeah. yeah that may have been your problem but face wash should be fine and then my Final, like, total... Well, actually, there's two things that I do. Then it's my brow, which I'm all about the brow. I bloody love a brow, and I think oh. brow's underrated. You've got a great brow. But they change everything. Yeah. You your brows, and everything comes together. But my sister, who is so beautiful, like, she's a redhead, very, very fair, teeny, teeny, weeny. I, if she can't, she's not very good at doing her makeup, so I try to teach her, put a brow on, and she gets so weirded out, she can't see herself like it. Really? And she's got very fair... They just frame your face. I think they're amazing. Well, they're the best. And I also them. think, if even if you're fair, a dark brow looks really cool. Well, blonde hair, black brows is a really classic Hollywood look, and I yeah. love it. It's just, it looks really kind of sexy and smart. And totally. Yeah. It really does, and it sort of brings out the eye. Yeah. Like, especially, even if you've got dark eyes, oh, it makes really your cool eyes darker. Look. Like, Debbie yeah. Harry did it. Really yes. Dark brown, really, really blonde hair. Looks amazing. I'm a massive fan, actually, of the false eyelash. Yeah. And I have so many different types and styles. Um, and actually, I'm looking at designing my own ones now, which nice. is really cool, just because I've tried so many different ones. But I, I really like, I think they're either too modern and too thick, or they're too fine and they're not really I vintage hate it enough. They're all sparsy and oh, kind of browny, sparse hair. Or too long, actually. Yeah. Like, I don't like that. Yeah. Don't yeah, no porn lashes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and this is like, I don't wear them every day, but I wear, these are by the, um, the Vintage Cosmetic Company. Have you seen or heard of those before? No. They're a new company and they are, they do like, um, just real vintage, every, everything you, from the sort of liners to the lashes mm -hmm. to the, you know, everything is sort of like vintage inspired and they're amazing. They're a really good company. So that so far they've been the best ones that I've found. So how often would you wear those? Um, for events. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I always feel overdressed with lashes, so it is more for going to somewhere posh. Yeah. It's um, kind of fun to be overdressed when you go out. Yeah. Them. Oh, definitely. No, when you go out for sure, yeah. you know, I'm certainly not shy of a bit of makeup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, to I mean, I, I do love a lash and it really does finish off the 60s look for sure. For sure it does. And I'm so do you put on no those on after you've put your mascara on? Yeah, yeah. final thing. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> Normally I'm running out the door and I'm like, shit, I really yeah. want to put these on. And I just find the secret is to get the glue almost dry. Exactly. Oh, but it, it took me ages to wet that up. Yeah. I and mean, I have like white gunge all over your eyes. It's almost dry, kind of tacky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they go on. Um, I want to talk to you about tattoos because this is something, this is a love that we share. I love tattoos. Um, tell me a little bit how you got into tattoos in the first place. Well, I used to be a body piercer mm -hmm. and I was piercing um, at a studio called Cold Steel for almost eight years. Mm -hmm. um, obviously piercing and tattooing went hand in hand. But I was really good, you know, the first tattoo I wanted was a mermaid entwined with a shark. I love sharks. Yeah. I love mermaids, or well, I did then. Um, 
really pleased I didn't do that. <laughs> um, but then, so I waited and worked next door to a really good studio. Um, really great artists used to come and go from there, but I became really good friends with a guy called Mo Coppolata, mm -hmm. who now owns a family business. And we just designed these wings together. Um, but before we did those, I, I knew that I was going to do that. We were talking about those for ages. But I got some stars on my legs, some proper like 1950s lone stars. And then I got my hands done with some white ink. Oh yeah, more stars. Yeah, more stars. I love a star. I was going to get some white ink stars all the way down my neck. And then we got the big wings. Yes. Let me see, what, what have you got? Okay, so... Um, I want to see. I'm about to get my third. I have to ration myself though, because I'm slightly addicted to them. I have to step back from the tattoo yeah. colours and take my time out. So I've got a little one there, which um, my best friend Sarah and I share, which we got done when she got married, because we bonded over our love of Modesty Blaze. Uh, amazing! And on my I can... back, Let's I have a look. Have oh, wow! Um, Hang on, I'm oh, going in. Sailor Jack oh, Swallow with great. my children's initials oh. in a vine in its beat. And who did that? Um, Phil Kyle at Magnum Opus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brighton, who's also on the London Inc. show. Yeah. Have, have, a, have a look at the back, because the, the, okay. the, everyone's obviously interested in the tattoos. Now, you scandalised everybody, didn't you? I can't believe the other day a tabloid <sighs> had a whole front page. I know! In 2013, it was <laughs> the weirdest front page. <laughs> slow was, news day. I, I know, say. seriously slow news day. But I think I've probably got the ugliest bra in the world on. No, it's fine. Um, so you've got these wings, so Mo did these. Mo did these. And you designed them together? Together, like mostly. I kind of said what I wanted. And that's a lot of work that's It's a lot of work, those. and it's not even finished. You don't have to zip me up. How many <sighs> sessions have you got left, do you think? I've got one, one or two more sessions to go, but I haven't actually been tattooed for about, about two, three years. Because right. he's really busy. He's now booked up for two years at a time. Yeah. I'm really busy. I just keep forgetting. I keep thinking, right, I should do it. He's got loads of my bloody money. I should go and do it. Um, but I just keep forgetting, to be honest. And it's a big area. I mean, you're looking at sort of not doing much the next day, aren't you? Yeah, but that's fine. Do you know what? The afterwards, everyone was always sort of moody about the afterwards. For me, the tattooing itself is bloody painful. It's too much like agony. So I, I still have those memories. And I know that as you get older, you get worse in those yeah. instances, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. And I think that maybe the longer you leave it, the more sort of intimidating it gets. It's worth finishing, though, surely. I've got to finish it. Yeah, no, really. Thank you so much for speaking to me don't today. Don't be silly. It's an honour to rifle through your makeup. It's my absolute favourite thing. Thanks and for I'm having me. Sure so many people will be thrilled to know how you put your eyeliner on. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so for much having me.